Good morning creators and welcome to another UEFN tutorial. In this episode, we're hopping back into Verse to create a custom re resource HUD for your Tycoon maps or any other maps that need resources. The first thing you want to do is open up your Verse Explorer, right click and add a new Verse file to your project. I'm going to name this one resource UI device like that. Create. Once it's created, double click to open it up. It's going to take a second to load. That's okay. Just sit here patiently. And now it's open. So first question is, how are we going to assign our UI? There's, um, there's two ways you might want to do this. If you want it to be removed, you might want to use a switch device. Um, but since it's a resource UI for like a tycoon game, usually you assign it when the player spawns in. Um, so let's just use player spawners. So how, how do we get our player spawners? We're going to do at editable. We're going to call this player spawners, plural, and then colon equal to, which is the, uh, not colon equal to just colon. So colon square brackets, which indicates an array, which is a list of objects. Um, and then we type player, spawner, device. Indicates that this is an array of player spawners. Then set that equal to array with curly brackets. Awesome. There are your player spawners. Pretty epic. Um, now that you have your player spawners, go into your on begin function and then type four. And we're say, we're gonna call these PS and then add a colon and player spawners. What this does is it's going to execute for every single player spawner in this list. So we're going to say PS dot spawn event. And then you can, uh, you can do dot subscribe. And then in parentheses, let's say player spawned is the name of our function. Awesome. So we're going to create a, our uh, player spawn function. Our parameter is an agent. So just call it agent. And then we're going to turn nothing. So type void. We're going to add a print statement. Player spawn like so. Awesome. So now that we have a, our, our uh, player spawn thing, we need to verify that they don't have a HUD already. Um, so when it comes to a text block, which is what we're using to store our player's information, we need to store a text block per player. And how do we do that? Well, up here, let's type ver, which is a variable, which means it can be changed. Um, let's call this my resource text block. Actually remove my because it just gets really long resource text block per agent add a colon square brackets and inside of the square brackets put agent after the square brackets put a question mark which indicates an option an optional um, and then type text block set that equal to map with curly brackets. You'll see what we need to add fortnite.com slash UI to use text blocks. That's pretty simple. Just go up to your libraries up here, copy and paste, change devices to UI. Awesome. So now you have your resource text block per agent. We need to verify that they do not have one. So if my text block and then we're gonna do colon equal to resource text uh, block per agent, and then square brackets, put our agent in here, our agent from the parameter that it was sent, um, agent, and then add a question mark. And what this is going to do is ask if this returns a value. Does this get a value? Does this get a text block? If it does not have a text block, it's going to return false, which means this is going to fail. 
um, since we don't really need to, um, we don't really need anything after this if statement, you can leave it as is and add an else statement. Um, but just for my sake, I'm just going to say, I'm going to be sneaky and say not. Okay, never mind. We'll just ignore that I did that. Um, if, and then add curly brackets. And after that, say else, and then add a colon. Else is going to be when they do not have a text block yet, which means we need to assign that UI. We need to create it and we need to assign it. So else, um, what we're going to do is create our text block. So let's create another function, assign, assign UI, and then we're going to return our, or we're going to push our agent into this function as well. Assign UI and our parameter is an agent. Awesome. We're going to return void. We don't need to return any values. Print assigning UI like so. And that's great. That looks awesome. Um, what do we do now? Well, we need to create our HUD and let's let's create a function let's say canvas or my canvas is equal to make canvas and we're actually going to pass agent into this and i will explain why in a second in fact i will explain why right now make canvas let's define our function right here agent of type agent type void um, the reason why is because we're going to be creating our text block within here and then putting it into a canvas and then returning our canvas. In fact, this is not void. That was my mistake. It's re returning a canvas. Awesome. So print making canvas. Awesome. You'll see what we need to include on realengine.com slash temporary slash UI. So copy that down. Just like this and then replace it with UI. All right, you'll see we're having errors because we're not returning a canvas right now. So let's just create our canvas, my canvas of type canvas. So colon equal to canvas and then add a colon. And we have more stuff in here. So we have slots colon equal to um, array. And if you're confused about Canvas stuff and UIs. I do have a video right here, uh, which you can use to better understand. I explain it a little bit more here uh, in that video, but I assume you've seen it or you don't really need it. Um, so slots of array, canvas slot. And here's where we're gonna need to initialize our widget. We don't have a widget yet. Our widget is going to be our text block. So we need to create our text block. So let's name this my text block awesome um it's going to be of type text block in fact i don't think we need to specify the type here so so colon and equal to text block add curly brackets for now and then our widget's going to be my text block like so awesome okay that's cool that's awesome um, what do we do now? Well, our text block needs to have some values in here. For example, what color are we using? So what does the text block have? Uh, at the set, I was not going to explain these things, but might as well. So you can go into our Fortnite digest verse to see our text block. A text block has a shadow. Uh, it has a shadow color. Um, you can set and change these values. It also has it also has opacity. Um, those are some nice things, but you can see this text block inherits from the text base class, which is found in the Unreal Engine Digest. And so search for text base here. What values do we have here? So we know that text block also has default text, default text color, and default text opacity, and default text justification and default overflow policy. 
and you can change these dynamically using these set and get functions. Um, but we just need to worry about the default right now. So default text, we're going to be changing the text anyway, so we don't need to worry about the text, but we do need to worry about the text color. Um, question is what color do we want to use? We can just use a basic color. Um, so let's just go in here, say default color is equal to, um, what colors are we going to use? Well, there is a nice library here. And you can go deep into this uh, and I'll show you where to look, but there's versa.org slash colors. And I'm going to use named colors because they have a list of colors that are already written for you, which is great. But if you want to go deeper into this, the verse digest verse has a color section uh, somewhere down here. Yeah, down, down at the bottom, they have colors. You can use RGB colors. You can use all these amazing things to get the colors. But you also have named colors right here, which are already created for you. So making things easy. I'm just going to use white. Um, I think by default, it's black. So just be aware of that. Uh, I want to use white for this, though. So default color is white. Uh, default text color, my bad. I got to pay attention. Um, you know, we don't really need default text because we're changing that later. Um, so now we have our widget. We also need to include other members of a canvas slot. Once again, go back into your Unreal Engine uh, digest and then search for canvas slot. It'll tell you what's inside of a canvas slot. You have anchors, offsets, alignments, a lot of these things here that you might be like, what? Um, and so my, my trick which I go over in the tutorial I mentioned earlier. Um, you open up your editor, you go into your content drawer, um, you create a widget blueprint using inter uh, user interface, open it up uh, just so I can redo this. Place down a canvas panel, and then you can place down whatever you want. In this case, we're using a text block and Text box great. You can type whatever you want in here. Um, it's not going to affect much. Um, so alignment is basically um, basically the pivot point of your of your widget, uh, and which is which is very important for text blocks because alignment determines where the text is moving from. By default, alignment is zero zero which means the text is going to be written from the top left to the bottom right. So, which ultimately is just um, top or left to right, like normal, like if you were writing, um, if it's at 0.5 and 0.5, the text is going to be originating from the center, very center, um, in which case you actually don't need the Y here, just the X value 0.5 is going to make your text originate from the center and move out outwards so it's center aligned and if you have one as your x it's going to be right aligned where it's reading from the right to left which is the opposite so just bear that in mind wherever you're placing your um ui you might want to change the alignment um but for me i'm just, just going to keep it on the left because uh, that's just easier for me so once you have this there's not much you have to do but place it where you want it to be and then take your anchors and then make them full. The reason why we're using full anchors is because in a recent update without Epic warning us, um, verse now scales with HUD scale. And the unfortunate thing about that is anchors also scale, which means something that's on screen during normal HUDs can get off screen when it's like changed. Um, basically just keep it on full and to get full it's just anchors minimum are zero zero and maximum are one one that means it's going to be placed in the same location it's still going to scale but it's not going to scale off of its position so just find where you want it to be since i can uh, move it around i'm just gonna have it kind of close to the center and let's just take a screenshot of these values and type them in. Uh, I'm going to be switching back and forth, so bear with me. So we have anchors. 
that's of type uh, I think it's called anchor like that uh, curly brackets like I said we want them to be full so minimum is equal to vector 2 uh, you'll notice we need to create another library vector 2 like that another library just copy your Unreal Engine stuff, paste it down, and add spatial math. So we have vector twos now. So minimum is vector two, and inside of this vector two, we want x to be 0, 0.0, and we want y to be 0, 0.0 as well. And maximum is gonna be a vector two. x is equal to 1.0 and y is equal to 1.0 as well. Those are your anchors. Now you have your full anchors and it's great, um, but you need to specify your margins and alignment as well. Um, I don't need to specify my alignment because I'm going with the default zero, zero, but margins need to be defined as well. So margin like that, mm -mm, it's offsets. They call it offsets, not margin. Offsets is equal to margin and so our margins are found in our editor. So let's open it up. So offset left is 844. So left is equal to uh, 844 for me. Um, go back here. Offset top is 520. So top is equal to 520. And yes, you do need to define these all uh, otherwise, you might have some issues with like scaling. Um, you still have 911 and 519 for right is 911. And bottom is what did I say? Don't think it matters much. 519. Awesome. 519.0. You do need to have these decimal places here because it needs floats and floats have decimal places. All right, so that's everything you need for your wacky canvas slot. Um, that's awesome. But we have one issue here and that's we are not assigning the text block to our player. So we just got to add a if statement. So if set, our map is called resource text block per agent. So resource text blocks per agent, and then add square brackets. Our agent is called agent. It's the one we passed right here. And we're gonna set that equal to option, because this is an optional. Remember we had a question mark right here. That means it's an optional. So option, and our option is gonna be my text block, which is great. And then we can add curly brackets at the end now we should be assigning our text block to our player. If not, you might want to add some if statements as a buffer, but it should work. Um, you know, I'm uh, I'm usually not as clumsy, but I just don't care. <laughs> uh, so we're going to return my canvas. Return my canvas like that. And so now we have our whole make canvas function. We sent our text block for our player. And we now sent our um, canvas to be used by our assigned UI function. So we have our canvas. And inside of this canvas, we're just, let's just get our player UI. So if colon player UI colon equals to get player UI, add square brackets. Um, so get player UI as a function needs a player. And since we have an agent, we have to just convert it to a player. So the way we do that is just player and then square brackets. And inside of those square brackets, agent changes the agent to a player and then gets their player UI. Um, then player UI dot add widget. And we're going to make our widget my canvas. Simple. So now it is on the player's screen, which is awesome, which is great. But we don't have any text on it yet. And we don't have the 
conditional stuff. We don't get the um, the resources. So we need to create a function that is going to loop and constantly update our our stuff. So let's call this. Let's first do spawn. Spawn is going to create a um, a timed out function, a suspe suspended function, uh, which is based on time. So spawn. Uh, what would we call this? I, we can call it like um, refresh UI. Refresh UI. That's a great name. Yeah. Refresh UI. Add our parentheses inside. Let's include. Mm, let's let's include agent. Yeah, that's good. Refresh UI. So refresh UI. Agent type key agent type void. Um, so we have a refresh UI function print starting to refresh. Okay, that is cool. I feel like there might be an issue. Oh yeah, stupid. You gotta add suspended, which is afterwards, I think. Suspends, suspends like that. This means that it is going to use time, um, which is great. So we're going to add a loop statement. And inside of this loop, we're going to have sleep. And in here, you can have any value. Um, because I'm going to be publishing this uh, as a snippet, um, we're going to add at editable um, refresh rate of type floats is equal to, let's say our refresh rate is 0.1 like that. So our sleep is going to be a refresh rate. So every 0.1 seconds, it's going to be refreshing our HUD. You can have it as zero, but I feel like I'm superstitious and I think that might cause issues, but uh, issues with lag or whatever. It's not a super heavy function either. So whatever works, but you know, players won't really notice the difference between zero seconds and 0.1 seconds. Um, so what do we do now? Well, let's get our text block, okay? So text block is equal to, let's actually add an if statement, yeah. If text block is equal to resource text blocks per agent. And then our agent is of course, the one we pass in the function like that, add a question mark so that we guarantee that it's a text block and not an optional, and then add a colon there. I added an equal sign. I need the colon there. Uh, my, my mistake there, you need a colon and equal sign. Um, so now that you have that, let's add a tab before the loop so that it's inside of this if function. So if there is a text block, it will loop. Otherwise, it won't loop, um, which is also a pretty good bug fix right there. Um, and now here, all we got to do is get our resource amounts and change our text. So how do we get our resource amount? Let's open up a conditional button device. So at editable condit button of type conditional button device, conditional button device like that. Same stuff. So we call it a condit button. Um, so condit button. Why did we get pick a con conditional button? Well, if you go into your Fortnite digest first and search for conditional button, you'll see it has some nice functions here. The big one is that we can get item. Um, let's find it. Mm, this always gets me. There's so many things here. get item counts yes get item counts um from the agent and it basically gets how many items they have stored um of that type so you need an agent and you need the index that that item is in the conditional button because a conditional button can have three different keys and this is the index of the key the first index is zero second index is one and third index is two um so if you're using multiple items just bear that in mind 
since we're just using one index, um, we're just going to use index zero. So conda button dot get item counts using agent, and we'll use key item zero like that. We need a value here, so let's call this um, my resource and then colon equal to. So now we have my re resource stored as an amount. That's awesome. Now we have to update our text block. So text block dot set text. Remember that there's that sex, uh, set text function. Um, parentheses. And here's where we need yet another function. Uh, here's a function I love to do. It's a string to message for some reason. Uh, you have to convert your strings to messages. I think it's like something to do with localization. Um, all you gotta do is create a function up here. We're gonna call it either string to message or whatever you wanna name it, doesn't matter. I am super lazy, so I have to do S2M because I write this function a lot, um, S2M, and then S of type string. So S2M in parentheses, S of type string. And then we're going to return a message, set that equal to quotation mark, curly brackets, S inside of those curly brackets, and then a uh, quotation mark. Is that not right? Oh, yes. Um, before the S2M or whatever your name of the function is, before the, um, or before the, uh, the parameters, you need to add localizes. That's what makes this all possible. Localizes which is going to be, you know, the two closed um, greater than less than signs localizes, and that's going to return a string uh, or a message based on that string. Super complicated, but it's very simple. Uh, so we, we can now write S2M inside of here to get our message. And inside of this, we just write quotation marks and whatever text we want inside of that. So we can say, my golds or just um, golds and then a colon um, and then if you want to display a value you just need curly brackets and then inside of those curly brackets you just name the name of the variable so my variable is called my resource and so now it will print out gold colon space and then whatever this value is you can also add an emoji here Note that not all emojis are supported in Fortnite, so be aware of that. Um, but with all this information, you should be able to set your text. And I think that's everything we need. And we'll verify that in a second. So once you're done with that, we want to go to verse, build verse code. And go to our creative devices, resource UI device, place it down. So now that's placed down, go to our details. We're going to add our player spawners. So player spawner one, player spawner two. We have a refresh rate and we need a conditional button. So conditional button. Right here, conditional button, super simple. All we need in this conditional button is an item. So let's say gold. Everything else does not matter. We just need it to be able to access items. So right there, conditional button, place it down. And just so I can access items in game, we're going to create an item spawner so that I can just spawn gold and pick it up and see how it updates. So um, let's do gold like that. Let's do infinite respawns. This is going to be crazy. Um, continuously spawn items. Great. So now it's just going to spawn a lot of gold, which is exactly what I want. Um, and if I, if I did this correctly, we should, um, we should not have issues, but we'll see. All right. So now we get to test and, uh, hope that it works. Why is this on the right? What? Am I crazy? It's supposed to be on the left, right? What? I have no clue. That's crazy.
Anyways. Player spawn. You'll see that the widget appears uh, with an incorrect value. Oh, that's why. Now, sometimes I can be stupid. And one of these issues is that I currently have infinite resources on. So right now it thinks I have infinite gold, uh, which I do technically. Where is infinite resources? Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we should have a proper gold amount. Gold zero. You'll see if I scale with my HUD like that. It does scale. It's unfortunate. You know what? I said that anchors would fix it. They really didn't. Um, so obviously, I don't understand how anchors work. So I would um, I would experiment with anchors till you get something that works properly. Um, like probably just stick to. I, I honestly don't know. So experiment with anchors until you get your um, your HUD properly aligned. Um, and let me know in the comments, like, I want to pin a comment, whoever, like, whoever figures out how to properly use anchors so that it doesn't move with HUD scaling. That would be awesome. Um, but anyways, I have my gold here. If I pick up gold, you'll see it starts updating. Go in here, you start running around picking up gold. It's updating, which is great. So whatever amount I have in my inventory is the amount that it shows. And that's pretty much all you need for this tutorial. Um, I hope you had a great time. I'm honestly getting distracted because this is kind of fun. I think we need like a... Is, 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 this is kind of like the Chuck E. Cheese... <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese like a money grab machine, you know? Like, oh my goodness. Nostalgia. Um, anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, Please give us a like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you want to see a specific tutorial, let me know. I'm trying to get more tutorials out, so any suggestion helps. And I hope you have an amazing day, and good luck creating.